Hi, welcome to Thorlabs. My name is Bill, and today I'm going to talk about aligning your polarizer's transmission axis with your table. For today's demonstration, I have a collimated laser diode package, a polarizing beam splitter cube, a variety of polarizers, some in some precision rotation mounts, a power sensor, and a power meter. Now your SMP polarization states are defined by the plane of incidence with your polarizing optic. But you may be asking, what is the plane of incidence? And I like to think about this with a polarizing beam splitter cube. So if I put this into the path, I have an incoming ray that has some combination of S and P polarization. The S polarization component will reflect from the cube and hit my ruler. So now if you think about the incoming ray and the outgoing ray, those two make up a plane, which is the plane of incidence on your polarizing beam splitter cube. If you happen to take your cube and rotate it 90 degrees, and for some reason you want that S polarization component to point upward, then the plane of incidence is then perpendicular to your table. But since the majority of optical setups typically keep the beam height around the same, and all the reflections stay parallel to the table, then your SMP polarization states automatically reference to the table. Now, sometimes in your optical setups, you want to take a measurement of the pure SMP polarization state with a polarizer in front of your power sensor, or you want to set up an input polarizer to put in pure P or S polarization to your system. So one way to do this is to take a rectangular polarizer and essentially put it on top of a post. You could take your polarizer, you rotate it 90 degrees for your orthogonal polarization state, and you call it a day. But a lot of the time you need a little bit more precision than that, and you want to do an optical measurement to set up your polarization axis. Now before we get started in showing how I'm going to do that, I'm going to give a little bit of a background. So now if you have a linear polarized input, that's going to be at some angle. And you take your polarizer and you put it perfectly vertical. The power throughput through that polarizer will be dependent on the cosine of the angle between your input polarization and that vertical polarizer axis. If you then take that polarizer and you flip it on the optical post, then the same amount of power would be transmitting through your polarizer in the ideal state. If, for some reason, your polarizer is rotated off-axis, and say it's closer to your input polarization state, then the power throughput will increase. And when you rotate the polarizer and go through the opposite face, then the power will decrease. So what we're going to do is try to put the light through both sides of the polarizer, flipping it back and forth until we get the same amount of power. And once that happens, we know that our polarization axis is aligned to the table. So let's take a look. <laughs> so to begin, I'll take the first polarizer and I'll place that in front of my source. And this will be my input polarizer. And so we want this polarizer axis to not be exactly vertical or horizontal because then it won't matter where we align our polarizer. When we flip it, you'll get the same amount of power. So I'll typically use the engraving that's on the side of the polarizer housing to give a general sense of what the input polarization state is. Now it's important to note that that engraving has a tolerance to it. So when the component is assembled, the optic is put into the pre-engraved housing. And so there's about a plus or minus five degree tolerance as to whether that engraving is exactly lined up with your polarization axis. Or if you're in my lab, a lot of times people like to take the polarizers out of the lens tubes and put them back and not actually line them up. So whenever you're using your polarizer, it's typically best to do some kind of optical me measurement to confirm the axis of the polarizer. So I'll take one of my other polarizers that I want to align. I'm going to connect that to the table.
Now when doing polarization alignment measurements, it's typically best to be measuring at a minimum. So that way when you see subtle changes in the rotation, you'll see them on the power. So I'll start by using the course adjustment and look to minimize the power transmitted through the polarizer. And now I'll loosen my post and I'll flip the polarizer around. You know, as I'm doing this, I'm aligning the back reflection of the polarizer into the input beam to try to ensure that I'm hitting approximately the same spot. There is a little bit of an angular dependence to the polarizers. It'll make your life a lot easier if you're hitting the same spot each time. And so now I'll take this power and I'll try to split the difference from what I was seeing before. I'm also using a locking ring on the post to try to maintain that same height location on the polarizer. So now my power is pretty close on both sides. And so I'm going to lock down the course measurement using the knob on the front. And I'm going to use the micrometer to do small tweaks to the alignment. And as I go flipping back and forth, eventually I convince myself that I'm getting approximately the same power through both faces of the polarizer, and now that my polarizer's transmission axis is aligned to the table. Now for the orthogonal axis, you have a few different options. The first is to go through this same procedure, where you take out this polarizer that we just aligned, you rotate your input polarizer about 90 degrees, and then bring in the other polarizer that you want to align. The other option is that you can then remove this input polarizer and simply cross the second polarizer with the first until you get minimum power. In that case, you'll be sure that the polarizer axes are 90 degrees with respect to each other. The third option is to do a combination of the two. So the first is to cross the two polarizers to get a minimum. That way you know what the minimum power should be when the polarizers are crossed. Then you take out the polarizer that you aligned. You go through the procedure flipping the polarizer back and forth until you're getting the same power through both faces. And then you bring your polarizer back in to cross to see if you get that minimum power. Now for the interest of time, I'm simply going to cross the polarizers to get a minimum power. So I'll take this first polarizer out of the path. And I'm going to bring in my second polarizer. 
and I'm going to butt this up against this lens tube. Now, you'll note that when we're doing polarization measurements and trying to find minimum values, we're pretty much always doing this in a dark lab. We're definitely not doing this with spotlights around the table. And that's because any extra light in the measurement will increase that noise level and you won't necessarily find your true minimum. In this case, I've taken some lens tube and I've extended it from my power sensor and hoping that I'm blocking as much of the light as possible. So now I'm going to take my coarse alignment and I'm going to find a minimum. I'm going to lock the course adjustment and use the micrometer. See if I can reduce it any further. Okay. And once your power is at a minimum, now you know that the two polarizers are 90 degrees with respect to each other. So in general, your P and S polarization states are defined by the plane of incidence on your polarizing optic. And since a lot of optical measurements are performed with the beams traveling parallel to the table, the P and S states end up being defined to the table as well. So it's convenient to align your polarizer axes to the table as well. Hopefully this helps you out in your application someday. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact Xcode.